Um, where's our... Ah, thanks, Jenny. So, anyone got any comments? I um, really enjoyed listening to what he had to say about, um, you know, letting go of all your attitudes and all of the expectations of other people or anything like that and just, it was, he really went on and on and on about it and it was just really important. I really liked it. And isn't it really interesting, Gloria, that he chooses to do it within a movement that you're getting under your habits. Mm. <laughs> you have to be getting under your habits to do this. You've got time. You've got to spread your attention and soften. And isn't it interesting? That's the moment he chooses, he chooses yeah. to <laughs> start to drop some of these ideas in. Not necessarily when he's talking to you in a group, mm. but when you're in movement, doing something non-habitual. Yeah. <laughs> And, and I think for me, it helped, it really helped me to monitor that aspect of myself, you know, not just monitoring the movement, but actually monitoring what was, you know, just those sorts of emotions and feelings mm -hmm. and thoughts mm -hmm. and so all of those mm -hmm. things as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how he uses his voice to hold the safety for you while you're doing that. You know, he doesn't go too much into this He he provides through his self-use a really safe place where, which is a very different place to hold you than down here where everything yeah. is much. It's very, yeah, it's very solid. It's very, very solid yeah. how he provides that. Yeah, it's, it was like he knew. environment, absolutely. And, you know, then you were confident that of where he was taking you. Yeah, yeah, that was the thing. You really sure. felt confident that he mm. was there holding mm. the space and that he had his eyes on you. And, mm. and I don't mean his eyes on you, in mm. a, but that he was monitoring what was going on in the room. Uh, he's... Yeah, and he also said there that uh, something about don't think that this isn't also true for me. Absolutely. Mm. That, you know. He drops it, it in. I'm still yeah. learning. And it's mm -hmm. like, it, this is just true for everybody. This is a human Yeah. And condition. so straight away you go, oh, <laughs> you know, yeah. It's not just me and my problems and my holdings and my attitudes. It's just how human beings are. And he just, mm. it's, mm. That, that was really lovely. Mm. Yeah. Mm. 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 Anyone else? Just in terms of what you felt when you, even when you were doing the lesson. How did it go to soften your intention that much? <laughs> I liked some of the other strategies he used. <clears throat> I mean, of course, as he often has to do in Amherst, he had to tell people to do less. He had to tell people mm -hmm. to do less. Mm -hmm. But then, particularly through telling the, by telling people to smile and then telling them Absolutely. to show, that was really, really good for, I think, starting the process that, that Gloria has referred to of... Mm. Um, Mm. Of you know because there's a, a the trying habit often starts with being very serious so yeah mm. and you laughed is about releasing the belly yeah. smiling's about releasing the belly yeah <laughs> I love the bit about not having to tell the story <laughs> and not laughing at the other guy because he didn't know how to tell stories <laughs> and again it. It softens the intentionality yeah. in the room by telling the story. Mm. It's just yeah. a real lightning of the space. Mm. Mm. He reminds me of my grandfather. And um, I can tell that's a good thing. Hey? <laughs> but um, no, no, his whole just quiet, just his manner reminds me of my grandfather. Um, it was interesting what you just said then about that getting in underneath your habits is that for the first time after all this time, I've realised that when I do something, I always go to length on the one side, <laughs> always the same side, not, it's always my right side. Mm. How long have I been doing this now? And I've only just got that. So it's interesting that we've got, with that letting go and just going underneath, you can pick it mm. up. Mm. So. Mm. Mm. Uh, and as more of those big muscles 
move out of the picture, you know. So he started us going back with this and we've done the bell hand and shifting weight, you know. And that he lets you initially move the head, yeah, press with the head, but not push, but, you know, that the head goes back because if my head goes back, for most of it, it's, it's easier to let this come forward, which mm. was the lesson you were doing with Lisa. Yeah, how do I let this come forward? And then can I reach the point where this can happen and my head doesn't have to move? Yeah, so he's getting more and more proximal all the time. But he'll bring the periphery in if he wants to help us to get something to begin to move, but he gradually becomes so it was the shoulders. And then it was the middle of us beginning to initiate so he's going through this whole process of moving us more to where we really hold all our habits yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> i just love the way that he brought us down to underneath our habits so easily you know, quite often when I do an ATM, I'm really focused on what's happening here, what's happening there, you know, and it seems such a natural process and it was just so easeful, not effortless so much as easeful. Mm. Yeah, that mm. was um, a really nice thing to experience mm. and hopefully something that I'll carry. Fantastic. Yeah. And as I said, I'd really encourage you to listen to him more. Yeah. Listen to how he teaches ATM, how, because you can't, you know, you can see his self-use on the videos, but you can hear it in his voice, mm. no? that he just really, and because he's there and he's got his external and his internal and the space around me, he can just go to all of these different mm. places and take you to those places. Mm. <laughs> But again, it's been a process. Would this have had the same impact in the first week of your training? God, no. <laughs> yeah, they're the approximations that that are keeping going. Yeah. Anything else? So what does it mean for you to soften your intention? What does it, just like, what does it mean to be integrated? How do you know that you've softened your intention? How do you <laughs> sense it in yourselves? What does happen to this ability to do these very small movements? We were just talking with Julieta mm. about my, when I block, when I speak in English, so she was asking me, what makes you block? And, not, and she was talking about soften my intention <laughs> and soften my uh, wanted to be so proficient. And I, I am in Spanish <laughs> that I am not anymore because <laughs> I'm already mixed three languages in my brain and I'm not proficient or very proficient in, in none of them. So... Um, in, 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 in my case, it's, it's like uh, t coming back some to, to, to be a baby. You know, when you learn things and you, you, you keep the language listening to the people, so listening how the people talk, the, pe the words they use, and mimic that, mm -hmm. and soften my intention and not try to be... A, the, 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 the person who is proficient in, in one thing and I'm not in the other. <laughs> so it's, it's when I'm thinking in a, mm. in a person who is training for be the best sportman and they look, okay, I do this, I do that. And then when they go to the, to the, to the course and they just do and they don't think anymore. Mm. When the golfer do the best hit to the ball and don't think about it mm. because he had all this moment that he was observing, mm. training. Mm. 
Mm. Uh, and, and it's what the main thing we do here when we practice awareness through movement. Just feel what's happened when I live here, what's happened in the other. I have that refined observation about mm. myself. But mm. so often my intention is not try to get there. Mm. It's the process. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And accept that I'm not there mm. in mm. my case. Mm. Because for, for, for a way, I, sometimes I want to be already there or I imagine myself there. So I think, why I'm not there? <laughs> why I'm still the back? Right? Mm. 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 And I think, you know, when we get into that, I'm still back there, but am I really back there? <laughs> you know, and how do I know I'm back there? Not back there is because I've got more things to pay attention to. Yeah. That I can make so many more distinctions than before. You know, and it's really interesting. It's, it's that whole thing of Sue put it so beautifully when she was talking that, oh, I never realized that I always lengthen. I can't remember which side, Sue, and it doesn't matter, her right side. But as Sue said it, it wasn't a problem. There was everything in the way Sue said it was, I never realized that. So there's not the judgment in there. Do you know what I mean? There's not the, oh, I always do this. It's Ah, now I've got something else I can pay attention to because the attitude she was in when she discovered it <laughs> was not one of I'm fixing it or... Mm. So it's fascinating stuff. <laughs> mm. Mm. Okay, so we're going to... Jim, watch this video of a little girl called Elizabeth. This is the only video of Elizabeth. There's, so often in Amherst, there's a, a few. This is the only one with Elizabeth. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to watch the beginning of it. So I'm telling you this so that you can sort of observe with knowing where we're going. Watch the beginning of it until she gets on the table. No, and then we're going to pause it. And the question is going to be, with what you've seen and the little bit of conversation there is between um, Feldenkrais and Elizabeth before she gets on the table for the lesson, what have you found out about Elizabeth and would it be enough for you to begin to do a lesson with her? Mm -hmm. And if it isn't enough for you to begin to do a lesson with her, what else would you want to find out? Okay? <laughs> yes. No. He may see her again. I don't know. There's no video of it, but this is the first time he sees her. These are just such a brilliant resource for you. I hope you're utilising them. <laughs> Do we want to turn off some of the lights? Does someone know where the lights are? I don't think, yeah, it doesn't tell us how old Elizabeth is. She's got a hemiplegia, so one side's weaker than the other. And the lesson's called Half Side Amphibian. Mm. 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 
Bisschen, oder? What's your name? Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. Actually, your name now will be that. Yes. What do you feel? Fine. Fine? Yeah. And what man do you want to come in? Because um, yeah. I want to try to improve this side. Yeah. It's not as good as the other side. All right, would you please take off your sandals? So what, John? And she, he said, what do you want to improve? And she said, this one. <laughs> it's it is you and the other one. It's very good to Just make your feelings. And what you want to decide a little better than that. Take a look at me. Can you take that away? And you're your back. And oops, sorry, one job. Slowly. Get up. Let's have it. Now lie in your stomach. Easy. That's Feldenkrais's beginning of the. Hmm. Huh? So, what did you observe in that very quick bit, Elizabeth? And what further information would you like before you decided on a lesson for Elizabeth? So, you can get into a little group straight away to talk about it or think about it on your own first. I just say what.